Hi, moms and dads. Parental Alienation Survival Coach is part of the Compassion Division of Speak Worldwide Nonprofit Charity. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, some of the um, scholarly meanings behind psychological control. As you know, from the work we've been doing, parental alienation is really a slang term. And it's something that's not in medical literature uh, really well defined. So what we're really talking about is a pervasive form of psychological control over the mind of a child by a person who doesn't believe that children need to love and be loved by both parents and both sides of the family. That's not normal to believe that about a child, that they don't need to be loved by both parents and both sides of the family. And when I say that, when all of the experts say that, we're talking about two emotionally available, loving, non-abusive parents. The child deserves to love and be loved by both sides of the family, even though we all have our faults and none of us are perfect. So I wanted to just read from uh, some literature, and I believe this was originally put out by Dr. Childress, but why, why I think it's important is that it's not just Childress, and Childress quotes a lot of other great experts. Some of them are current, and some of them are from the past. So I'm going to read, and um, I'll try to help you understand it if I feel that it's a little confusing, okay? But I really would like you to get to know some of the other names in um, family therapy that are important names to know. So parental psychological control is divine, defined as verbal and nonverbal behaviors that intrude on youth's emotional and psychological autonomy. That comes from Stone, Bueller, and Barber in 2002. Okay, so um, it's on page six, uh, page 57 of uh, something that they wrote together, Stone, Bueller, and Barber. What's important there that I would highlight is that um, it's defined as verbal and nonverbal, okay, nonverbal behaviors that intrude on the on the youth's emotional and psychological autonomy. That means, you know, when you say psychological autonomy, that means they're, you know, they're independent thinking. So if something is intruding on their independent thinking and leading them to believe that, you know, in, in this case, a parent is bad, is evil, is not worth your time. Okay, so, but it's, but what's important is they're saying it's done verbally and non-verbally. So, Things that happen, and I'm, I'm, they're, not, they're not unique to anyone because they happen in pretty much every situation, but here's an example of a nonverbal is a, a parent uh, calling and saying, you know, I thought the child was supposed to come today. Why aren't you here? It's, you know, an hour past the time you were supposed to drop off the child. And the controlling, psychologically controlling parent doesn't answer the phone. Um, you're, and then you're left to be leaving voicemail after voicemail wondering where your child is and, and you know your plans for the day are evaporating as the hours go by. And so on the other end, in front of the child, the parent is sometimes playing the voicemail um, for everyone you know in the step family or whoever may be there, the in -law, your ex-in-laws, to listen to and make fun of as you become more and more frantic. So they might make fun of your voicemails. That's a nonverbal behavior. They're not saying your mother's, you know, or father isn't worth listening to or worth uh, communicating with, but they're showing you because what they're doing is taking your voicemail, your attempt to communicate and making fun of you. So that's a nonverbal behavior. So that's important. You know, they may not say, your dad's a deadbeat or your dad is uh, worthless or your mom is you know not worth loving or not worth paying attention to but they show the child through their behaviors another one and this one is also barber and Harmon. this is barber and Harmon said psychological control refers to parental behaviors that are intrusive and manipulative of the child's thoughts feelings and attachments to parents so you know they may reward the child for agreeing with them when they make fun of the other parent and they may punish the child 
in psychological ways for loving and caring about the other parent. And again, it might not be done so much with words, but it can be done with behaviors. I know someone who was told, if you don't go visit mom on Mother's Day, then I'll buy you a mini bike. Well, that's words, but I mean, that can be done without words too. You know, as the child doesn't or refuses to visit the child, the child's parent on Mother's Day, or it could be Father's Day, and then the mother will buy them a gift. And maybe that's done without words, but it happens. And vice versa, punishing behaviors when the child does say, but I really want to see daddy, it's Father's Day. And somehow a punishing behavior ensues. So that's Barbara and Harmon. Um, here we have Kiwi, Morris, Chris, Holtberg, and Silk. Again, you know, I, it's, it's important that we know that we are uh, getting our information from a multitude of sources. It's not just one psychologist that says these things. There's so many. And, and you know, I always refer to Baker and Bone and obviously Childress and uh, Miller and Warshak. And you can look any of these names up on the, in, on the internet and you'll see YouTube videos and scholarly papers. So this one with five authors, psychological control has historically been defined as psychologically and emotionally manipulative techniques. This doesn't even say words or parental behaviors that are not responsive to the child's psychological and emotional needs. Psychologically controlling parents create a coercive, unpredictable, or negative emotional climate in the family. So again, uh, these behaviors coerce. They're coercive. Our poor children have been coerced to believe certain things about us that are not necessarily true. What is true is we're humans, we all have our faults, but unfortunately, as you know from other videos I've done on splitting behavior, the children split us into a category of all bad. You're either all bad, or if you agree with the alienating parent, then you're okay in their book. Um, central elements of psychological control are intrusion into the child's psychological world and self-definition. Remember, you're half of the child. You are part of the child. So the child has, you know, two contributing parts to them. And when you make them think that one of those parts is so bad, so bad that it's not worthy of love, then you are, like it says here, um, intruding into the psycholo child psychological world and self-definition and parental attempts to manipulate the child thoughts and feelings through invoking invoking guilt shame anxiety um, and, and I'm going to add a little about the about loving the other parent psychological control is distinguished from behavioral control in that the parent attempts to control through the use of criticism dominance and um, anxiety or guilt induction to control the youth the youth's thoughts and feelings rather than the youth's behavior so that's why it's so damaging and so serious they're trying to control your thoughts it's like mind control you've heard that term so psychological um, abuse is like mind control but it's an actual defined in the medical literature um, diagnosis, psychological child abuse. And that was Stone, Bueller, and Barber. So you're starting to hear some of the same names again, but all of these people collaborate with, you know, other experts in the field, and that's why you start to hear some of the same names again. Uh, there's more. I don't want, I didn't want to make this video too long. I'm going to try to keep it under 10 minutes. So we'll do another one or two, and this one again is Stone, Bueller, and Barber. Okay, so it's from the same paper. Unresolved tension in the adult relationship might spill over to the parental-child relationship through the parent's use of psychological control. And remember, that is a way, psychological control is a way to control the youth's thoughts and feelings. Okay, so through the use of psychological control as a way of securing and maintaining a strong emotional alliance and level of support from the children. I'm gonna pause there and just add my comments. Not good to try to get support for an adult matter from the poor children. That puts them in the middle, that triangle, well, here we go. As a consequence, the triangulated youth might feel pressured or obligated to listen to or agree with one parent's complaints against the other. It's a mess, it's a terrible mess, and it puts the kids in a really bad spot. The resulting enmeshment and cross-generational coalition 
would exemplify a parent's use of psychological control to coerce and maintain a parent-youth emotional alliance against the other parent. That is Haley, Mnuchin, and again, Stone, Barber, and uh, Bueller. So, you know, unfortunately, it is a really big mess, but I wanted to just take this video to define psychological abuse, which is really what we're talking about when we use the slang term, parental alienation. I think educating yourself, staying educated, staying current is very helpful. Um, it doesn't guarantee anything that um, the behaviors will change or that uh, you know there's no guarantee your child will come back. But as long as they are living, no matter how bad they seem to hate and reject you, there is a chance that someday a light bulb might go off. And that's why it's important for you to stay strong. Stay strong, moms and dads. Try to live the best, most happy version of yourself that you can possibly live because a day might come and you don't want to be a big emotional mess if that day comes that the children want to reach out to you. So stay strong. Hang in there, moms and dads. You're not alone. None of us are.